Okay. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome. My name is Liz. I'm thrilled and delighted to welcome you all to Art at Home, sponsored by the Hoboken Public Library, the greatest library on the entire planet. I am so thrilled at the support that the Hoboken Library gives to the arts. So today is our last class for April 2021. And as you know, April has many good things going for it. Uh, one, it is National Poetry Month, and we have been looking at artists who use poetry in their work. It is also the beginning of Asian American and Asian Pacific Islander American History Month. And finally, and this brings us to today's artist, it is National Humor Month. And because of that, I have chosen a particular artist to celebrate American humor. We will talk about his work for the first few minutes of class. We'll look at some of the work that he did in his career, and then I will talk about the materials that you need. I will send you off to gather them up, and then I will talk about what you can create yourself in today's session. So our artist for today is a man named Rube Goldberg. Rube Goldberg was a satirist, a comic strip artist. Oh, and before I begin, sorry to sidetrack here, but a few uh, behavioral reminders. I'm gonna ask folks to please mute yourselves when I'm doing uh, the introduction to the lesson and when I'm doing instruction, <clears throat> excuse me, instruction. It's another bad allergy day, excuse me, folks. And of course, if you have any comments or thoughts that you want to bring to class, or if you have any questions that you need to ask, then you of course can unmute yourselves. So thanks for that, everyone. So again, our artist for today is Rube Goldberg. He was a cartoonist. He was also a sculptor an author, an engineer, and an inventor. His full name was Reuben Garrett Lucius Goldberg, and he was born July 4th, 1883, and he died December 7th, 1970. And Goldberg is best known for his cartoons that show and depict very complicated gadgets that perform very simple tasks, but are incredibly complicated. So they have multiple parts and they do quite frankly, almost nothing. So they could have millions of little gears and levers and sections and, and I don't know, bits and pieces, but in the end they may do something as simple as tip some tea into a cup. But they're brilliant drawings and they're very, very funny and they gave pleasure to millions of people for a very long people of period of time throughout his entire life. He won a Pulitzer Prize for political cartooning in 1948. Um, also the National Cartoonist Society's Gold T-Square Award in 1955, the Banshee's Silver Lady Award in 1959, and he was a founding member and first president of the National Cartoonist Society. I personally believe that cartooning is an art form. It may not be fine art in the minds of many people, but it is an incredible skill. It requires a great deal of observation, which I've said repeatedly over and over. Observation, being able to see and observe carefully what is in front of you is the key to being able to draw and draw well. So I venerate, I look up to cartoonists. I think that they are extraordinary artists. Goldberg was born in San Francisco, California, 
uh, to Jewish parents. He was the third of seven children, three of whom died. He never really had art lessons. Apparently when he was four years old, he had drawing and painting lessons from a, a local sign painter and that was it for him for the rest of his life. He went to school for engineering at the University of California. He took an engineering job early on in his career, hated it and quit, and then started working as a cartoonist for the New York Sun. That was way back in 1938. He was an editorial cartoonist. And then the rest is history. Now you can go, there's a website um, dedicated to Rube Goldberg machines. There's even a Rube Goldberg machine contest. It originated in 1949 and the contest is still going on. You can enter, you can win. When I was an elementary school teacher, the science teacher at my school frequently would hold contest for the kids to create their own Rube Goldberg style machines. And the kids loved it. They had a ball doing it. All right. Any thoughts or comments on Mr. Goldberg before we start looking at some of his drawings? I have a quick question. Is there a Rube Gold? First of all, good morning to you. Good morning. And um, isn't there a Rube Goldberg machine in like Port Authority or Penn Station, one of them? Is that right? Like it's like on the one on one of the lower levels that's not necessarily frequented, like the main doors. I think it's the back. Actually, I think it's the back doors of Port Authority. Is that right, Mom? I don't know. I'm going to look. I'm going to look it up for us. <laughs> All of our New York people here. Well, it's in the North Building. I don't know if it's Rube Goldberg or not, but it's enormous and it's it's really cool. So it's we know it's Rube Goldberg style in the style of. Yeah. Was that Miss Wilson? Yes. Thank you so much. The North <laughs> Building, awesome. Yeah, it's it's near. If if you um, travel there and you come in from New Jersey, you walk across on the second level over to the North building and then go down the escalator. Oh no, you can't go down that way. You have to go down a different way now, but you still can get down to the North building from- I think I saw it. Side, and then it's in the front, sort of halfway, a little bit back from the front of the North building. Yeah. Awesome, Robin. Thank you, yeah. There These obscurities go. we know from living in the city, right? Yeah. They're amazing. I don't think I've ever seen it. My gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I've got to go look for it now. Awesome. It's pretty big and it's very cool. Awesome. Is it the one that balls go around? Uh-huh. Oh, I've seen it. It kind of looks like you would be expecting a gumball at the end of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> Well, it definitely, definitely sounds like a Rube Goldberg style machine. I'm hoping it actually is Rube Goldberg. Can oh, I found it. You have a picture of it? Can you share it? Oh, uh, I have to make you share person. I found it on my laptop, but I'm on my phone. I don't know how to share this. Uh, why don't you, if you can send us the link, perhaps. Uh, can I email you? Yeah, try and email me and I will try and figure out how to put it. Okay. Into but you can just put the link if you want to put the link, Sejin, in the text, in the uh, chat. In the chat, you if you add the link, you can um, send it to everyone. Okay, let me. Um, Don't stress, Sejin. If you can do it, <laughs> fine. I try my best. Sejin, you can always email it to me and I can email it to everyone. Okay. week to look at at their leisure. Don't worry. I hate the text stress thing. All right, so I want to help us look at some of his drawings. I'm so glad that Lauren, you remember this sculpture because he was a sculptor as well and he did 
actually create sculpture, although we're not going to look at pictures of his sculpture today. We are going to look at pictures of his wonderfully amusing drawings, for starters. Let's see if we can share the screen. Yes. So here's one of his cartoons. Hope everyone can see. The beginning of which is this milk bottle up here. It's a little blurry because it's digitized, unfortunately. Looks like the milk is pushing the fly. The fly is pushing something that's pushing the milk, that's pushing what looks like a bean bag, which is filling these cups with probably the milk. And they're going up, coming down and filling this jug with milk. And then the milk is, I don't know, going, pushing this mirror and then so on. And the milk is going into this bucket which is somehow going into this person. I don't know. Completely ridiculous. So it's bringing milk to this person, I guess, or child. I think it's a child in bed. So this is the type of amusing, funny, funny stuff that Goldberg did. Not great art, but fun art doesn't always have to be deeply serious. And I love it. All right, I'm gonna share these rapidly. Because I want us to get to work today. Well, I hope this one is different. Yes, okay, good. Stage in, you're still working on it. I think you should stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is not by uh, Goldberg, by the way. This is by uh, George Rhodes, but I found a YouTube video of it. <laughs> okay, as long as you're having fun. I sent it to you. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, another Rube Goldberg drawing. This one is so complex, I don't even dare try and explain it for everyone. Notice the way he letters each part of the machine, I'm assuming that's helping us go from point A to point whatever. I don't even see the letter A. Maybe somebody else can find it. Maybe it doesn't start with A. Maybe it starts with E or D. D may be the first. It's fabulous drawing. Really love this character right here. And I'm assuming this is the end and the machine is helping this man exercise. What do you think? <laughs> it's making me laugh. Like a jacuzzi, like a foot spa or something. Massage, yeah. <laughs> or it's making him do leg presses or something. Who knows? Or maybe it's just tickling him. Wonderful, wonderful use of his imagination, which that's what art is. I was watching the Henry Louis Gates show last night, Finding Your Roots, and he was doing the ancestry of Mandy Potemkin and Mandy kept saying, I'm an artist, I use my imagination. That's what my life is. And it just, resonated for me, because that is what we do, kids. 
Okay, one more, one more once. No, we saw this one, get rid of it. Let's try this one. Yeah, this one's very different. Ah, so many screens open. So this is, this may be one of his sculptures, I think, or it could be a sculpture done in the style of Rube Goldberg. That's what I think this is. And I wanted to show you how it could be 3D. So again, a lot of moving parts. Who knows where it ends up and what the outcome is gonna be but amusing, fun, silly, lots of opportunity for line, shape, texture, shading. How lucky for Rube Goldberg to find a profession where he could do what he loved and have fun at it for his whole life. This could be true for all of us. Still, no matter what your age. All right. So I want to show you what I'm thinking about doing for myself today. I'm going to do one last share. Let's close this. Can everyone see this picture? Yes? Yep. Yes. Okay, so this is a little mini still life that I've created in my studio space. It's a lot of metallic junk that I found around my house. This is a big giant magnet that my first husband, Donald Cohen, kept in his workspace in the basement. And over the years, all these metal pieces of junk kind of attached themselves to the giant magnet. Then this is my staple gun that I use when I'm stretching canvas, a regular old stapler here. I brought up a sifter from a strainer from my kitchen. I have this roll of aluminum. Sometimes I do painting on aluminum. And then this is my potato smasher that I stuck in the top. So I'm inviting you, you have a, two choices today. One, to go hog wild with your imagination and think up a Rube Goldbergian style machine that does absolutely nothing and go in the cartoon direction and do something completely fantastical and fun and cartoony, or go in the completely opposite direction, which is what I'm gonna do, and do an observation of real objects and try and recreate them realistically on paper. Any questions? So I've set up this mini still life, but I've opted to use hard edge, metallic machine like objects from around my home. And I'm going to try and replicate them on paper using pencil first. And then I'm probably gonna switch to Uniball or graphite or graphite crayon to darken them up so you can see them. And I'm gonna try and do mine realistically using shading, et cetera. Questions, thoughts, 
comments. Too hard, too easy. Did we set up our own situation or are we gonna be looking at your screen? Exactly my idea. Oh, um, I was gonna stop this share, but because that never occurred to me, but if you would like me to keep this image up so that you could look at my still life, I could. What I would prefer to do, however, is to stop the share and draw. And then if you wanna watch me drawing, you have that option. Which would everybody prefer? I'd like to create my own. You watch live screen. Watch you draw. I draw. Okay, that sounds like the majority. What I could do, I guess, Somehow, I could maybe forward this image to people. Let me try and do that. So I'm going to stop the share. Basically, all you'll need today for materials. And while you're doing that, I will try and forward the photograph of my still life to you all. My metallic still life. All you need today is paper, pencil, and if you like drawing in Sharpie or Uniball or Graphite, those kinds of drawing tools. Any questions? And of course, you'll need objects for your still life if you're doing this still life. Let me put in the chat materials that you'll need. I feel like you might also be able to do a Rube machine with your items? Sure, oh yeah, you can gather materials from around your home to use as inspiration for your own room. Oh no, I meant your lot of items looks incredibly interesting. Thank you for telling me that was a potato smasher because I was wondering what that was. <laughs> You're welcome. Other interesting objects are things like old computer chips which I used to have a ton of laying around the house, but they seem to have disappeared. I, I search for them everywhere. Oh, and I forgot erasers are good things to have today too. Pictures of machines. You can find thousands of pictures online of simple machines. So in order to email you guys, I'm going to, this is always scary to me, I'm gonna minimize the Zoom screen. Maybe not. Yes. So I can go back to my emails. Yes, this is good. We can do this. All right, I just emailed you all the image. Let's see if I can load it into the chat box. Come on, Liz, you should be able to figure this out. Yeah, I have to be able to get it from Dropbox, but I don't use Dropbox.
please remember to mute everyone. No, so in your emails, you should all now have uh, the image of my still life. I tried to put it in the chat box with no luck. Don't know how to do that yet. If anyone knows how, you could email me the instructions. All right, it looks like everybody's working. No one's having any difficulties. So I'm gonna start drawing. As always, I'm going to say you can watch me if you wish. I actually prefer that you not watch me. I, as a teacher, I believe it's kind of inhibiting if you watch the teacher, but if you want to watch me for a few minutes and then get into your own work, that's fine. That's better. Starting by framing my work, I just frequently like to do this. It helps them to situate where they're going to put things in their space. I'm starting first in pencil. I will go over my lines with a darker drawing tool so that you can see better. What I have done. Thank 
I have to say this, this kind of still life of everyday objects is the greatest way to learn how to draw because it's inanimate, it won't move. You're really forced to look hard at what's in front of you and nothing trains you better to see and draw than things that sit still. And then they're very complex objects. They have a lot going on. And the more complicated the shape, texture, and form of an object is, the more you are forced to look at it and observe detail. And the more detail you see, the more realistic your drawing will become. So doing this today, I hope it's gonna launch you into doing more drawings of everyday things. Is, may I ask, um, when you when you were learning to draw, yeah. Because I'm finding I'm I'm hitting a, a wall in terms of like trying to draw things. It doesn't look great. I'm not quite, you know, practiced enough at whatever it is. Say it's drawing the scissors. If I continually am trying to learn by drawing it, but I can't, I kind of hit a wall on I don't know whatever it is, a reflection something. How do you get yourself out of that? Like we've got YouTube now and and whatnot, but how? What kind of exercises did you give you? Did you go back to like basic shapes? How did you do that? Well, there's all kinds of different directions you can go in learning, and I, I'm really thrilled that you asked this question. Number one, you could walk away for a few days, just stop, do everything but drawing. <laughs> and okay. But it's a great thing to do. That's one direction you could go. In. Number two, you could do something called blind contour. And I recommended at the very beginning of all our classes, hold on, let me get it. I recommended, and I will recommend it again, this book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. And it will review for you the technique of blind contour. Blind contour is when 
you do not look at the paper. Right. You only look at the object that you're drawing. And that frees you from the need to make a photographic image on your paper. It just forces you to look at what you're looking at. And blind contour is very meditative. It makes you relax. It relaxes your whole body. And I think you'll find it a way to break through the inhibitions that you're having or the what you call the wall that you're having. In okay. It. And then the more you draw, the more confident you're going to become. And finally, you've got to stop the negative chat. You've got to stop this, oh, it's not good. I don't like how it looks. You just have to keep drawing. <laughs> okay. Eventually, you're going to hit upon the millionth drawing, maybe the one that you feel good about. Okay. And Thank you. The brightest do. Oh, God. The, uh, I'm excited to dig into this. So thank you for this um, recommendation. And um, taking a few days is sometimes helpful. <laughs> I agree. There's nothing wrong with taking a break.
that. So I finished my pencil sketch. It's a very loose gestural drawing. Oh no, I haven't. I just realized I forgot to do the potato smasher. But as soon as I finish my pencil sketch, I'm gonna start having fun with graphite. I'm doing the pencil sketch very loose. My potato smashers all bent out of shape from way back when we were banging pots and pans to thank the first responders. <laughs> it was my favorite pot banging tool. God, that seems like a million years ago. Liz, I have a question. Yep. So how, you know, like when you do a portrait of a face, you have some proportions that you can play with, like, you know, eyes and then where the lines go. And what I'm finding I have difficulty with is trying to figure it out how to get it all into the page size and everything. And is there any trick in terms of like measuring that would make that easier? I try to start with the largest object in a still life and work from there and look at everything in relation to the largest object. So that's a great question, Suzanne. But if it's one object, so I'm just doing one like really object that's a really interesting shape, you just start with the biggest thing in that object, it's like a orange um, to, you know, press oranges and grapefruits. So just the biggest shape. Right. Um, okay. I focused on this aluminum tube because it's just the biggest thing in the, in the still life. So that was my starting point because then I can look at the proportions of things in relation to that. Does that help? Yeah. But if it's one object, it feels, I see what you're saying in the relationship, but if it's one thing, you just, if there are kind of shapes that are, I don't know. Try to quadrant your page like this. Like just make your, can you, I don't know, can, like make your page like this. I can't even do this properly. And then, oh my gosh. So I guess that's kind of it. So like you see half, you see like half of a face or quarters and then you kind of draw that and then like make the generalized shape, Liz, you know, like the, big, the biggest thing you're looking at, but then quadrant it off and see if you can situate it that way. If it's a face, I mean, you, you're looking obviously at eyes, nose, mouth, but if it's like, a paintbrush, you're looking kind of at it this way. So it's kind of like you, you're doing a corner and a corner and a corner. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you. Actually. Sure. Good morning. Hello. Morning, Helen. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I'm a little late. That's quite all right. So yes, you could grid your paper, everyone. 
you could start by creating a grid and then placing your objects within that grid. That's a good tip, Lori. If you want to be incredibly precise, that will help you align your objects on the page. But you don't have to. Well, Helen, we are making funny machines, pictures of funny machines. Okay. You can continue drawing simple machines that you find around your house, like you've been doing. So uh -huh. terrific drawings, you can do more of those. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. So I could do a different one, right? Do a different one, sure. Okay. Okay. If you're doing the still life uh, activity, because of the extreme sunlight today, really enjoy the shadows, the darks and lights, if possible, that are available to you today. I guess it depends on the lighting, where you are.
notice where the light is coming from because that determines where your darkest shadows will be. And always remember to start light. You can always add your darker shadow as you go. Please mute everyone.
Yeah, okay. Any questions, problems? Good. Everybody's focused. Okay, right on. Basically coloring in, trying to create volume. In the forms that Liz, did you say something? I'm having trouble hearing you. Sorry, I'm basically filling in now, trying to create volume. Thank you for letting me know. Thanks. I have to yell. Has that been true for every class or just today? I think it's when you're uh, turned away. Okay. That that's when it's hard to hear. I'll move. I'll move the uh, laptop closer.
Now, when you're doing light silver things, like I'm looking at the scissors in my still life, you can create the form by doing the shading behind them rather than coloring them in. So that's another tip. You see how I'm building the form of the scissors by coloring around them. always shadow behind the objects. That's what makes them 3D. Just have to start seeing that shadow.
I'm taking paper towel and I'm blending some of my shading. You certainly don't have to do this if you like the texture that your lines make, then don't do this.
So we have a good 15 minutes till sharing. Keep going, everyone. You all seem so focused. More and more of you are going off camera, so I'm assuming that means you're working hard. <laughs> I don't know how real school teachers deal with it. God bless them.
Oh, baby. Excuse me. Yes. I have a question. Uh, computers and laptops are good to do. I'm sorry. Could you say that again, Helen? Computers. You could do computers or laptops. Too? You could draw a computer. Yeah, that's a that's a great machine to draw. Okay. Good. Do it. All right. Thanks.
Please mute if you can, please mute. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting feedback, so somebody please mute. Please mute. really painful guys when that happens so for, and for some reason i cannot mute everyone myself at this point i don't know why So we have three minutes left, and then I'm going to tell you about our next wonderful artist and what we're doing next week. And then invite you all to share, if you would like. Remember, the sharing portion of our class is really useful for ideas. For what to do next in your work. This is not the place for critiquing, just for offering suggestions. I have put in the chat box the name of our next artist. For those of you who are done, you can check her out. All right, I hate to make everyone stop, but I just want to briefly talk about next week's class. So May, we are really going to focus on Asian and Asian Pacific Islander American artists. And our first artist for our next class is a Korean American sculptor named Do Ho Sa. And we are going to take a little, not so deep dish, but a, a little dive into sculpture ourselves. And I'm gonna ask you to start collecting pieces of cardboard. Any old cardboard boxes that you may have around the house, um, thin cardboard, heavier cardboard. Let me show you the kinds of cardboard that you might want to use. So any cardboard that 
you may collect in some little corner of your house is perfect. And that's it. That's all you really need. We are going to make cardboard sculpture ourselves. I think that Sharissa in the grab and go boxes may be uh, supplying you with lightweight tag board as well. I'm hoping that she will. And uh, that's perfect to use for next week's project as well. So uh, any questions? Cardboard, yes. And if you don't have any cardboard, here's a suggestion. If you go to the local corner store, they're frequently recycling cardboard from deliveries or um, if you get home delivery of anything, save the boxes. If you have old shoe boxes laying around, they'll be perfect to use as well. I would recommend flattening them for the project that we're gonna do. But cardboard is terrific. Even a heavyweight paper will work for next week's project as well. Oh, wow. And you could paint it? We could um, paint them maybe, after the, the maybe, maybe at the end of the construction that we do, you can oh. paint it. Absolutely, Heather. But first, we're going to build. Yeah. Oh. Yes, and Leslie recommended you can use the back of art pads. That's perfect to use too. Sketch pads, just rip off the cardboard off the back. Oh, wow. That's yeah. excellent too. I wouldn't recommend doing that if you have a lot of drawing paper left though, because you don't want the whole sketch pad to fall apart. But if you have a sketch pad where you only have a few pieces of paper left, perfect. Just tear off the Liz. back. Excuse me, Liz. Sure. And how about, uh, you know, those cardboard of the meat? We could use that too? I would wash it first, but yes. First, perfect. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Cereal boxes are terrific. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you have an empty cereal box, that works well too. Okay. Thanks. Great suggestions, everyone. I wouldn't recommend painting the cardboard first. It's going to make no. it difficult for you to manipulate and build with. Uh -huh. Our goal is to build with the cardboard. So don't paint it first, Helen, OK? All right, OK. Build do first. We need, do we need glues, too? I'm not nope. quite sure how to answer that question. <laughs> you can bring adhesives with you. But I'm going to challenge you to build without adhesive first. We're going to try and build without tape and without glue. And then if that doesn't work, you can use glue in the end. But I'm going to teach you ways of building without glue. Thank you. Mm. You're welcome. It's fun. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, now today, I don't know about you, but I, it was pure pleasure for me today. I so love drawing everyday objects. It's one of my favorite things to do. I hope it was really great for all of you folks too, all of you participants also. Is there anyone who wants to share what they made today? And remember ground rules, we're giving you know, positive ideas, thoughts of areas where people could improve, things they could add or change. All right, Sage Jin, you're already holding yours up. <laughs> Spotlight yeah. you. Wow. <laughs> I just found a pair of glasses that Ethan uses for his remote class. <laughs> wow, that's good. <laughs> love it. Looks like I would I would love to see you repeat the glasses all over the page. Just fill the page with more glasses, turn them in all different directions. My challenge was that whenever I change my uh, sitting position, like the glass looks different. So yes. yeah, that's yeah. great. That's <laughs> what we want because it forces you to see in a different way. And I know this happens to improve your drawing skills. <laughs> So I noticed when she held up the glasses themselves, we could then see the reflection on them on the lens. 
And yeah. I can see how her perspective would really change. It would be really <laughs> cool to figure out how to do that reflection because to me, it seems like kind of an unnatural shape. And I find that when trying to draw things that are real, I'm resistant to seeing something that I decide looks strange. But if you include it, it makes things so much more real. It's really, really mm -hmm. great job. Thank you. <laughs> yes, beautiful, Sajin. And the more times you do it, the more confident you will get. Thank you. Love, I love the shading underneath. Beautiful drawing. <laughs> Thank you. Who else? Who's next? Karen, okay. Can you hold it up, Karen? Oh, you seem to have frozen. Oh, here you go. Okay. Um, so. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. I. I just did a drawing. Can you? Yes, yes. Uh, Stand still. We can see. Fabulous. Real dark. But the idea is that on the bottom left, or here, uh, oh, here. <laughs> so uh -huh. uh, so um, this is, um, hang on, it starts here. I said, this is a plug that goes into the wall and then it wraps around and comes up here. And this is one of those, um, one of those things that you take a ha that you see in cartoons or they were real where you would take a hammer and bang it and see how hard you could get the ball, how high you'd get the ball. Uh -huh. So, and then the ball would hit the hammer and, um, oh, okay, the ball would hit the hammer and the hammer would go up and it would pull this string. And, oh, wow. And then, I don't know what the wrench is for. It's, I guess it's holding up the hammer. And, <laughs> um, this yes. string is attached to an alarm clock. <gasps> and the alarm clock, which is <clears throat> on our grandfather, I don't know why, but now somehow I got over to this side and put a watering can. Uh, I have to make a, I have to put a saw or scissors here so that it'll tip the um, triangle and tilt the watering can into a plant, which will get heavier and tip over into that can plant it, and it goes on. And the alarm clock is what sets it off because it's going to be an alarm clock. Anyway, it it's doesn't- great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The idea. Great use of your imagination, Karen. Go <laughs> over it in Sharpie. Out uh, yeah. I'm Go over it in Sharpie. I, I was going to, um, or figure it out a little better so that it really makes sense. Oh, it's great. I love it. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thanks. Awesome use of your imagination and great drawing. Thank you. Anybody else? Dina. Thanks, Karen. Dina, go ahead. Take it away. Ooh, ooh, and in ah. color. Okay, so we've got, uh, oh, hang on. We've got mechanical energy. The bowling ball goes down around the loop, dabs the lemon juice. Juice affects the copper wire and the steel wire to create chemical energy, which makes a spark, lights the fire, causes the balloon to fill up from the air coming up from the bottle knocks over the dominoes. Now we got mechanical energy. We turn off the light. That's good. Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. It looks like out of a page of a book. <laughs> it does, very cartoony. Wow. Super. 
amazing. Amazing. Are you an engineer or do you have a background in? No, I taught science. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Love it. That's why you've included all the sources of energy. Yes. And great drawing. Thank you so much. Awesome. I love the lightning bolt. <laughs> Is it an LED light? That's what I want to know. Of course. <laughs> It's the only kind we use. <laughs> that was so neat. That really would be a wonderful way to demonstrate right. that aspect of science. That's quite brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Can you do it for real? Is it po possible? Yes, absolutely. You can build us. Can you build it? Yes, I can. <laughs> Not in two hours, come. but yeah, because I got to collect <laughs> the materials. All right. <laughs> Terrific. Who else would like to share? We have. We have three minutes left. Um, Wave your arms. That's that's how people are getting turns today. It really is effective. Okay, Lauren. Okay, let me start off by saying this is. Ooh. I think I'm getting feet. Is there any feedback? Is that okay? Not now. It's not. It's not. So. <laughs> Um, first of all, drawing glass bottles, I thought I made something fairly easy. I sure didn't, is what I sure didn't do. And, um, but it was a few glass bottles, a candlestick, there's a picture frame, and gosh, I don't know if you can see this, and a lamp. It is tough for us to see. Can you? What do you like? Yeah, that's yeah. better. Okay, Not so annoying. it's really bad. Not happy with it. I erased the other one and um, I know what I'm practicing today is gonna be some of this, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's my still life. It needs a lot of work, but this is what I did. Show us more next week, please. I will, I definitely will. And I want you to stop the negative self check, okay? It's hard. It's really very bad. hard. Okay, good. Thank you. Hello. Yes, Hello? Helen. Thank you, Lauren. Yes, Helen. What? Excuse me. Um, we're supposed to get the supplies in the library. I believe you will get a grab and go bag for May, <coughs> like every other month. Mm -hmm. Everyone, yes. You go to oh, the okay. library if you are lucky enough to be in Hoboken. You can go to the library and get a grab and go bag like any other month. Yes. Okay. It'll be on Monday. Okay. Hi, on Monday. Thank yes. All Friday. right. Thanks. Can I say, Lauren, I want to say something about yours. It's very light, so it's hard to see. But there, I think there's a bottle on the, on the bottom right that's tilted. Yeah, um, you muted yourself. Um, but well, it's very, I, I just think it's very well to call baby bear because it's a funny kind of perspective. Would you say that's true? Um, Liz, it is. It's a really great perspective. It's yeah. difficult for sure. Um, well, you, you yes. always like challenging yourself, Lauren, you always take the hard way. Well, Many artists do. Uncomfortable, right? You're not learning. So I try to you make it look so easy. And I'm not I'm not just saying that. Like you it's amazing how every week you whip something up during our time and it's it blows my mind. Lauren, I've been drawing since I was seven years old. I have a couple <laughs> years on oh, you. Wow. So a couple of years? Mm. Yeah. We have and a lot I, of I've been practicing a little longer than you. See, this is this is exactly why I prefer that you not watch me, but I don't know what else to do while Zoom teaching. I, there's no other way. I try to Can look I just um comment techniques. on Lauren's very creative easel. Oh, I uh, love you, Jane. Can I have one minute? Because EJ has raised her hand. EJ, do you have a question? I actually wanted to show my piece. Can you see it? Um, I, oh, that's so cool. It's a hairdryer. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. 
I'm I use an ultra line <laughs> fine, uh, yeah, yeah, ultra yeah. fine Sharpie. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it will have energy once it's plugged in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love <laughs> the way you wrapped the plug around the, the unit. That's awesome. Yeah, I had oh, to spend okay. at least yeah. a minute. Oh, there you are. Good. Moving the wire. Oh, well, it's, you, it's terrific. It's, yeah. Just, are you new to class this week? No, I was here last week. Do you want to see my, I came in late last week. Do you want to see my um, mandala from last week? Very quickly, because we're okay. actually out of time. I would love. Yes, oh, oh, okay. I do remember uh, now, yes. You have to add Perfect. some gold to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very beautiful. Just Thank a you. touch of gold. All right, I'm sorry, everyone. We have completely run out of time. Don't forget for next week, you need cardboard and scissors. That's it. Okay. Thank you. And I love today's class. Get out there and enjoy the sun. It's going to be raining.